Now let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Now you see, this is what we be talking about, man. This is why we got to go members on there all the time, boy. Let me tell you something. It's a bunch of loud mouth sucker be around here, man. And, and here's the thing, bro. The fact that guys feel so adamant to defend everything. Like you, like if you from the hood, you know for a fact you done seen a grown man with an underage girl before if you from the hood. You done seen a grown man come up and pick up a sophomore from school before. You done saw it before. You done, and, 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 and nine times out of ten is in a single mother environment and the mama is cool with it. The guy come to the crib, buy grocery for the mama crib, get the mama money. Man, we've all seen this. In, in an impoverished environment, money moves things. That's just what it is. Money moves things now let's get into this thing man let's go ahead and dive into it all right now first we're gonna watch we're gonna look at this news clip that's gonna cover it's got pretty much cover the whole set of events from the raid till today it's just so we can get some so we can get some clarity on it man and then if we're gonna talk let's talk about bishop eddie long you no know, no i mean he i ain't gonna say rest in peace but he gone now so we ain't gonna speak on him long this man was running a mega church with thousands of members and groomed a couple of boys as boyfriends put them in apartments like 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 regular dudes do do girls put them in apartments and bought them clothes and gave them expense accounts and all that come on bro let's not sit around and act like this don't happen the problem is the problem is the average black man has been so downtrodden and browbeaten mostly by his own mental design that he still identifies with being an oppressed slave now i'm not saying you don't have some hurdles to jump but you have hurdles to jump because this system was set up and you didn't know it so our ancestors had to learn this system so yes there's st there's still some we're still behind but only because we they got a head start we didn't get the head start but to sit and say that no matter what is said about anybody you got to support them it's crazy to me no not everybody who's accused of being guilty is guilty but not everybody that your ass says innocent is innocent either. So let's get into this thing, man. All right, here's the clip. From the beginning, on Monday, federal agents for Homeland Security raided two of Diddy's properties, one in LA and one in Miami, and they both happened at the exact same time. And yes, they were equally as dramatic. The one in Los Angeles was being filmed by helicopters up in the sky. You could see agents storming into his house with guns raised, and guns blazing, basically. They brought out all sorts of people from the home, including two of his own children. His adult sons, Justin and King Combs, were brought out in handcuffs. They were thrown on the grass, and they were detained for a while as the agents went in, stormed the place, ransacked it, and collected a bunch of evidence. In fact, we actually got some video of the aftermath of his home, and you can see just how badly torn up the place was. They opened safes, they ripped open drawers, they took electronics with them, including computer parts, computer equipment. The feds were clearly looking for any and everything they could get their hands on, and they took it all with them. Meanwhile, now I want y'all to think about something too. Now I haven't even researched to see if there was a warrant, but I can almost guarantee you there was a warrant. Whether it was a dummy warrant or not, I don't know. But I guarantee you they didn't raid that man house without a warrant. So when someone says these raids should be illegal, illegal why? When the feds come, they have enough evidence to pin you. The feds don't lose. They are undefeated in court. No one beats a federal case. Find me the man who did. Look it up. If, he, if you find me one, he's definitely an outlier. The feds don't lose, especially in this modern time with all this technology, with people being online, with people keeping videos, with people keeping everything in their phone, with everything being plugged in on a cloud where if they got access to one thing, they got access to everything. Come on, bro. I'm telling you, man, like the feds, when the, now the state, the state can kick you in your door, man, tear everything up. I think that's the problem. The majority of people who are talking, they're used to thinking about the state officials, the state authorities, local authorities who just come in on a, on a, on a, on a humbug and tear stuff up and then leave out and leave it there. Dog, we talking about the feds. When the, by the time the feds come, man, they've been building a case against your ass, man, for 10 months. The feds don't just show up. They they have they have been watching you for years and they have been building their case for 10 months already. 
Now everything that they've tracked, everything that they've seen, they just trying to get the physical evidence of it. A lot of y'all don't really understand how this shit work, so you just be talking and running your mouth. Now, let's get back in. Somebody, hey, somebody said something right quick, man. Let, let me address this. Somebody said something that I thought was real interesting. Here it is, Professor Shock. A rumor is a rumor. But if five or more people say the same thing about you, man, that shit ain't a rumor. If five or more people say, I saw him do this, you did it. If five or more people say, he's a thief, you're a thief. If five or more people say, you know, you do, you, you do crack, guess what? You do it. You may not do it all the time, but one of them five people, somebody saw you do it. That's just the bottom line. And I'm not talking about people who say somebody told me. I'm talking about when five or more people come out and say, hey, you did this or you did this or you did this. And then when other people start getting incriminated around your shit. Bro, let me tell y'all something, man. I do believe that this lawsuit. The dude, what the name? Rodney, Rodney, whatever his name is. He has, I ain't about to call no, no grown dude, Lil Rod, but I do believe he's adding things to his lawsuit. I'm convinced of that. I don't believe everything he's starting to throw in is just, I don't believe that. But what this lawsuit did, first it was Cassie's lawsuit. And let me tell y'all something. Say what you want to say. Say what you want to say. But no one pays someone $30 million the next day after they file a lawsuit. Well, within the next few days after they file a lawsuit, if there's no guilt. Yes, eventually you settle out of court. Nobody settles before court. You got to be guilty as hell to settle before court. You got to be trying to pay somebody some hush money. Who settles before court for $30 million? Somebody who don't even want to go to court. Y'all got to stop being stupid. Stop being suckers. You know the problem in the world today. We'll talk about it later, man. And tomorrow, you know, no way. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about why black men in America support Chester's like Diddy and divesters like Candace Owens. I'm sick of y'all, man. Man, y'all weak, man. What, what has happened? The internet and social media has made the black American man soft. It has made him soft, emotional, always seeking validation, always seeking approval, and always seeking somebody to be on his side and pet him like a puppy. Ain't nobody raise y'all like this. In Miami, where Diddy has another home on Star Island, a raid was going on there as well. We haven't gotten quite as much footage from that raid, but we do know that the feds came by land, by sky, and also by sea. There's a boat that pulled up on a dock right next to Diddy's home, and they stormed the place there too. Presumably did the exact same thing as they did in LA, taking evidence, taking names, etc. Now, in terms of where Diddy was for all of this, it was a little confusing at first. There were two different private jet situations going on. His main private jet, an all black one, a Gulfstream 5 that he uses pretty often, was actually tracked to an island in the Caribbean called Antigua. And at first it looked like he was flying to Antigua, landing in Antigua, and a lot of people online assumed that Diddy was, quote, on the run or on the lam. As we learned after the fact, that wasn't quite the case. Diddy was not on that private jet. And at this point, there's no clear evidence that anybody really tied to him was on that jet. In any case, we know that the jet was in Antigua, it was grounded, it landed, and it was being dealt with there. In the meantime, Diddy was actually at an airport in Miami. He was about to go enjoy spring break with his kids. He's got two teenage daughters and a small entourage that he was with. They were stopped at the Opalaka Airport, which is an executive airport, private airport. A lot of private jets go there. And before he could take off in that private jet, Federal agents stopped him with Customs and Border Patrol, Homeland Security, and Miami PD. We actually have photos of Diddy interacting with these agents right there on the tarmac. You can see Diddy and his daughters and other people in his crew talking, being questioned. In some of the photos, it looks like some of them might be getting detained. In any case, we know that Diddy himself was not cuffed during this whole ordeal, but somebody was cuffed, uh, a guy named Brendan Paul, 25 year old young guy who seems to be an associate of Diddy's, a friend of Diddy's. He actually ended up getting arrested during this whole thing because 
Cops claim they found drugs in his travel bags, possession of cocaine, possession of marijuana. That's what he ended up getting booked for. And he was taken to jail and bonded out the next day. Meanwhile, while. All right, man. So look, somebody came in the concert, come in and said Willie Falcone uh, beat the feds. Well, him and his, um, him and his partner, man, uh, Magaluda, man, they, they have a uh, they have a uh, a documentary, man, they did on them, um, you know, called the the uh, I think it was the I think it was the Cowboys, the Kings of Miami, you know what I'm saying? The the white girl Cowboys. So here's the thing: they got indicted in 1991 on 17 drug traffickers charges. They got acquitted, but it was found out they got acquitted in 1996. Of course, you know, you got that money. You can push it five years. But it was found out that three witnesses who would have testified against them were murked in the five years between their arrest and the trial. And it later came out that they paid out several jurors to swing their case in their favor. So in 1999, prosecutor reconstructed the case, charging Michael Luda and Falcone with ordering the deaths of three witnesses, bribing two of the jurors and paying for that with laundered money. So they did end up getting some time, man. So uh, Willie Falcone, he played guilty to the money laundering in 2003, ended up spending four, getting 14 years, got out. 2017, they deported him. He was 62. Here's the thing. They didn't beat the feds. That's not beating the feds. Like I'm talking about if you get, beating the feds is they charge you with something that you didn't do and you, and you get off. You didn't beat the feds if you paid, if you murked people and paid off the jury. That ain't beating the feds. I'm talking about when the feds come at you with a case, they got you. And them boy knew they were got, so they murked a few people. They murked the witnesses that were going to get them pent up and paid off the jury. It's not the same thing, bro. I get what you're saying, but it's not the same thing. Everybody was kind of getting questioned inside. We got video of Diddy pacing around outside after the fact, and he looked distressed. He looked very nervous. But he himself was not in handcuffs, and he himself did not seem to be getting questioned all that much either. Fast forward to today and where things... Now, I'm going to be honest with you, man. He really didn't look stressed and nervous when he was pacing back and forth, man. But I, I try not to sensationalize the things that the news sensationalizes. So if you see something and it's sensationalized, I'm going to stop and address it because they sensationalized. Man, I watched that video. I zoomed it in. He just looked like a man that just walking around like... He walking slow, like he he don't look like a man that's nervous to me. He look like a man that's that's fucking impatient from being held up at the airport. That would look like to me. So I didn't see any nervousness or you know anything with him. Like oh my god, what's oh what's go I ain't see none of that, man. Things stand at this point. We know that federal investigators have subpoenaed a number of companies tied to Diddy, including charter jet companies, home security companies computer companies, things that Diddy has in his possession that they think will help them crack the case and help them surface evidence to implicate him in a crime. That's what they're trying to do here, right? In the meantime, Diddy has been off the radar and silent. That is until Thursday when he and his teenage daughters, the ones that were with him being stopped by agents on Monday, they ended up going to Top Golf in Miami. It was just the three of them, little private outing. Uh, there were photos taken of Diddy there. And he, he flashed the peace sign. He seems to be kind of telegraphing that I'm good. I'm not worried. I'm not nervous. Of course, we suspect that he probably is very nervous. The fact is he is not out of. See, we suspect that he probably is kind of nervous, like trying to sensationalize it. We suspect that he probably is kind of nervous. I believe, man, when you got that kind of money, you believe that you, you believe you Teflon. You believe that, you know, you can just, you could beat anything. Because at a certain point, y'all, I want y'all to think about something. And I'm not nearly at that point where Diddy is. But as you start to make money, you start to realize that a bunch of things that you couldn't get done before, you can get done with a little money. Like a bunch of things that people won't do for free, they'll do it for a little bit of money. And then some things that people are afraid to do, they'll do it for a little bit more money. And then something that people know going to get them jammed up forever, they'll do it for the right amount of money. And that's what you get. You get a man who's so used to living his life where money get him anything he want that he truly psychologically believes he can beat this. He believes he can beat it. And as far as them saying, man, that he was, 
that he was trying to flee the country. He wasn't trying to flee the country, man. It's spring break. He was about to take a spring break vacation with his daughters, man. You saw his daughters at the airport with him. He was about to take a spring. He wasn't trying to flee the country. He was about to take a spring break vacation with his daughters. Why he ain't take his sons? Cause them boy grown. They doing their own thing. They got their own money. His daughters are teenagers. He's about to take them on vacation. They jammed him up at the airport. He couldn't go. See, we're gonna we're gonna be fair about this. We're not trying to. You know, just pile on all this, these sensationalized headlines and all of that. What we're going to do, we're going to break down his past. We ain't even talking about nothing they found out. We don't know what they found, but we're going to break down his past. But let's finish this up, man. Let's finish this up. I got a couple super chats, man. Um, Try not to get too far behind him. Say it ain't so. Appreciate the fire bone. Just another case of what a man sows. He would definitely reap. Salute, Doc. Keep applying pressure 100. Salute to you, man. Salute. That's just what it is, man. Whatever you do, man, it's going to come back to you. Romel Wallace, salute to you. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate the dime. Saw my brother DJ Fresh in the building, man. Salute to Fresh, man. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate the dime. Play ball. Alpha's up, homie. Alpha's up. Let's get into this, man. Let's get back into this thing. Try to wrap up this clip right quick. The woods yet. He has not been charged or arrested or anything official just yet, but... The investigation, frankly, is just starting, and we know the feds are digging deep, trying to find stuff. They're interviewing people, they're going through evidence, they're going through hard drives, they're going through surveillance footage, and they are trying to get him on these sex trafficking claims that have been levied against him in several different lawsuits. Diddy has denied all of those claims. He's denied all the allegations made in these lawsuits, but a lot of these lawsuits keep on touching on the same theme, <laughs> alleged sex and human trafficking, including prostitutes. Some of them have alleged that underage people have been in the mix. He's denied all of that, but the feds have obviously heard these claims and now they're doing their own investigation, trying to see if there's any truth to it. And time will tell if Diddy ends up being charged or not. And right now we are learning more disturbing details complaint right, against much. Diddy and several co-defendants, including Diddy's son and actor. Oh, look, all right, we, I, we might well listen to this one too, man. This is a little bit. Sex workers, the allegations. It, it, it's, against it's a little bit. It's a little bit different. Let's listen to this one too. Wild sex parties to sex workers. God. All right. Y'all be patient, man. We got. And we right now, we're learning tonight. more disturbing details about Diddy's sex trafficking investigation from wild sex parties to sex workers. The allegations against this music mogul are shocking. Local Times crime specialist Bridget Matter is live with more. Bridget. So usually we do go live outside of Diddy's home, but today we, along with all other media, were thrown out of the neighborhood. Diddy has not been seen in the public eye since the raids on his homes in L.A. and here in Miami. On Monday, federal agents raided Sean P. Diddy Combs multi-million dollar mansions in L.A. and Miami. It was carried out by the Department of Homeland Security team that handles human trafficking crimes. A number of electronic devices were seized. While Diddy has not been arrested, a key member in his entourage, Brendan Paul, was while with Diddy at Opelaka Executive Airport. Paul is facing drug charges after police say he had suspected cocaine and marijuana laced candy in his bags. He is named as Diddy's drug mule in an updated 98 page complaint against Diddy and several co defendants, including Diddy's son and actor Cuba Gooding Jr., filed by music producer Rodney Jones. The scathing document mentions Miami 66 times and claims Diddy's $20 million Star Island pad hosted drug fueled sex parties with sex workers. It says women were sometimes recruited by Jones from the booby trap on the river using exclusive bad boy hats like this one worn by Jones and Paul. It goes on to list at least eight alleged sex workers visited the Star Island home 32 times between November 2022 and May of 2023. We going up, we going live. Jones claims Diddy is an enthusiastic drug user. And it I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. As long as uh, none of these people were underage, then uh, he, he, did he just, I mean, did is the average trick. He's a guy who didn't have no charisma. Then all this charisma, man, he picked his charisma up from being around Biggie. He just mimicked a bunch of Biggie style. Then he threw some money on top of it. Then you can, I mean, you, you can create your own, you know, you can create your image, you know, with some paper. And, and what you control in their cameras and what they show and how they how they gloss up the videos and all that what you controlling that with then what you dominating you know what you have a record company that's dominating hey man it's different you know what i'm saying it's a different thing but 
He's just a guy who got some money and realized that he didn't have to have no game. He didn't have to have no, 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 no flair or nothing. Like everybody has a price. And when he got his money right, he was like, well, hell, I'll just pay your price. If you got a price, I'll pay it. What's, what's your price? 20 bands? That's nothing. I got 20 bands in my sock right now. Here you go, 20 bands. Uh, what's your price? 10 bands? Oh, 10 bands, that's nothing. I, I blow my nose on 10 bands, that's nothing. I got, I got a pair of shoes worth 10 bands. So when you get it like that, you just become a willing trick like that. But here's the problem. When you get so foul and deep into it, average women, like regular women who outside of the sex work, worker industry, they're not going to deal with you. Like only a woman who's willing to be in that industry is going to deal with you because you just got a reputation for being a foul dude now and being involved in all kind of shit. And I'm going to be honest with you. You can have a certain amount of money, but once the woman views you as nasty, your, your money can't help you at that point. She can't help you at that point. Let's get back into it. It's required all employees, quote, from the butler to the chef to the housekeepers to walk around with a black Prada pouch or fanny pack filled with cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, marijuana gummies, and Tusi. The black pack, like this one Paul is wearing while holding two pill bottles on a yacht. The rap mogul has denied all sexual misconduct allegations brought against him in five separate lawsuits. Diddy's plane returned to the Opelaka Executive Airport on Wednesday, but the 54-year-old rapper is nowhere to be found. All right, man. So, now let's get into it. We're going to get into these people talking. We're going to start off strong, man. We're going to start off strong. First. We're going to listen to, and, and 50's been giving him a hard time, but we're going to listen to 50, 50 say why he's been giving him a hard time. And then we're going to get into some more people who, are, who have been saying things for years. See, people think that this just came out, but there are certain people who have been saying things for years. Years. Let's get into it. ATL Slab Rider, salute, salute. The court of public opinion, it just can't be influential in the court of law. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Um, a lot of times when the court, uh, the court of public opinion, it, it can. But really, when you really think about it, man, man, that man rich. That man rich. His lawyers are not going to be beat by the court of public opinion. Because they know legalese. See, the court, of, the court of public opinion is fine, but when you get inside that courtroom, the public, the, the, the court of public opinion may sway some jurors, but that's why they do the jury selection process to get the best jurors they can. Still may be swaying them a little bit. But, man, jurors are no competition for lawyers. You're just a regular person. Them, man, them boy been telling lies to get guilty people off forever. And, and the prosecutor been telling lies to get innocent people locked up forever. You can't compete with the prosecutor and the defense attorney if you just a regular old juror. Man, they're running circles around your mind. They go, th listen, that's why there are so many hung juries, because the prosecutor and defense attorney are so good at causing confusion that, but dog, that shit ain't, there ain't no court of public opinion, man, finna beat no uh, 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 prosecutor, man, and a, and, a, and a attorney of a billionaire, dog. It, not in this case, bro. I get it. And, and like, see, this, here's what we got to understand. We got to stop thinking we're talking about state court. Yeah, when you go to the state, it's a different thing. You got jurors of people from your town, from your, from wherever you are. We, we, that's a different thing. When we're talking about the Fed, the Fed is different. The Fed don't give a shit about public opinion. Like, the, the, listen, man, by the time the Feds come, they already got their case. They already got their evidence. You got, you got to take some people out, man, if you don't want to get charged, boy, when the feds come. But we'll see, though, man. We'll see. Diddy is a very high-profile guy. He is a very high-profile guy, so I'll give you that slab, Ryder. It's different for him because he's, like, like as far as in the black community, he's more, he's more high-profile than any of these other guys. He's more high-profile than Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, OG, back in the day, Bill Cosby was making more. One year, Bill Cosby made more money than Prince and Michael Jackson combined, and they were both in their primes. Bill was getting it back in the day. So, but that was then. By the time they jammed him up, nobody knew who he was. But, you know, you understand what I'm saying. The younger generation didn't know who he was, but did he? 
especially with him tied in with Young Miami and his son doing these things and Justin doing these things. He's always been relevant. And so maybe it will have an effect on the jury in his case, but it's less, it's less prominent or less prevalent in a federal courtroom than it is in a state courtroom and especially your local courtroom, your, your municipal court, your, your, your district court, your, come on, man, your man, listen, bro. That's, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a different thing, man. So let's get into it, bro. Let's get into it. We're going to talk about 50 tomorrow too, man. Let's get back into it. All right. So let's listen to Gene deal. Former bodyguard of Diddy. Puff was like, yeah, like first. You oh, hold, up, hold, up, hold up, hold up, hold up. My bad. First, we're gonna listen to Fifty Cent explain <laughs> what Puff did to did to him the first time he met him. Stop. Then he was like, "Yo, rapper All right, let's is check nowhere it out. to be found." Yeah, let's check it out, man. All right, we're gonna listen to Fifty talk about Puff, man. Puff was like, "Yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get." Stop. Then he was like, "Yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it? Like, we could just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. You telling me we gotta kick it." And he was like, yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like, I pay for it. And I was like, what the f this just said? <laughs> I got the f away from him because I was like, this is the like, Wait, this f just tell me he take me shopping. <laughs> and this is the f that goes off. But this is a little fruit pop. Pop is a fruit pop. Now, when you think about it, man, like, they laughing. But. If you hear fit to talk when he's trolling, you know when he's trolling. Man, Trump ain't, he ain't trolling right there. Like, that's the energy. And here's the thing. You may say, man, he just want to take you shopping. But when you talking to a man face to face, you know that man energy when he says what he's saying. And I'm going to be honest with you. To offer to take a grown man shopping that you just used to dealing with dudes like you deal with girls. That's, that's just obvious. Like, Put a one in the chat of another grown man who ain't your dad and offered to take you shopping. Anybody. Put a one in the chat. If another grown man has offered to take you shopping, put it in there. It, it, just, ain't, it, it just ain't never happened, dog. No one does it. So, and I know some of y'all still going to say, man, that don't mean that, man. Man, fit the problems you're trolling and blah, 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 and, and doing all that, man, blah, blah, blah. But let's remember, we'll see later on how he interacts with younger guys. And see, he didn't view Fitta as who he was. He viewed Fitta as a younger guy. Let's get back into it, man. So now let's listen to, we're going to listen to uh, Gene Deal, his former bodyguard, say some things about, you know, his, what he's seen and what he, you know, and what he's viewed and, you know, and give his insight on some things enjoy watching her get smashed by bbc's so you know what you think about that do you think she was the only one getting banged by him? <laughs> do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have with her it's something fishy about that, bro. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this and try to engage other men into sexual acts with him. Now, somebody may say, man, he just talking. That's a former bodyguard. He mad because he got fired, man. Man, Diddy probably kicked him to the curb. He ain't never had a check like that before. He mad, man. Diddy didn't support him at a certain time. I think there was a thing about, about Gene Deal. He had something going on. Uh, it's Something happened to his son or something, man. And, he, and uh, Diddy didn't support him or whatever. But here's the thing, brothers. This man said this on a public platform. And he's somebody who knows this man personally. Don't you believe that there would have been some defamation lawsuit come out of some. That's something defamatory right there. Listen, if Cardi B can win against Tasha K, then don't you think Diddy could win against Gene Deal? I'm telling you, brothers, when people start saying things, it gets to the point where when you feel like you're untouchable, yeah. let me tell y'all the one thing that happened, and I'm going to clip this as a short. Let me tell y'all the one thing that happens when a man gets too much money 
fame, and he thinks that means he has too much power. He stops doing damage control for the shit that he does that he know he shouldn't be doing. See, when you got to worry about going to prison, when you got to worry about going to prison because you might not be able to pay your bond and you're doing dirt, you do damage control. You cover your tracks. When you got so much money, well, you don't even care if people say your, see your track. See, we can all say, well, why did it going down? How come Clive Davis ain't going down? How come L.A. Reid ain't going down? Well, they got one pent on L.A. Reid. But how come the Clive Davis and, and the good old boys ain't going down? Because they stay the hell behind closed doors. Ain't no video of them calling men daddy. Ain't no video of them interacting with these young guys like we're going to see on this joint right here. Ain't no video of nobody saying Clive Davis did this to me or I ain't never going to Clive Davis house no more or I ain't never going. Listen, bro, ain't no video of none of that. All the video, all the audio is of Diddy. All the accusations being levied are against Diddy. Why? Because he is the one that these people look at as the man who hurt them. It was him. Don't nobody give a damn about who your handle is when you're a grown man. When you're a grown man, you make grown man decisions. Don't nobody care who you influenced by when you're a grown man, dog. If you're a grown man, you make your own decision. I don't care who you're talking about. Man, they influenced me. Well, they told me if I didn't do that to you, they do this to me. So you sacrifice me for yourself, fool? I ain't rocking with that, man. He don't know. Look, it's the same thing that happened with John Gotti with the Gambino family. They told him, John, you got to lay back, dog. You got to lay back. You just got to chill. You can't do it, man. You got to fall back. Carlo Gambino, the, 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 the OG of the Gambino family, was super laid back. You ain't never seen Flossy. John got it on TV. This dude is a literally a mob boss on TV like he's a movie star. Giving the fans the middle finger. That's what happens when you feel like you're untouchable. You get out there and you just get a fast middle finger all day long. You don't care if they see you because they can't do nothing to you. Why? Because you beat them that one time. And then you beat them that second time. But here's the problem. You only beating them because, and the thing is, now, now I will say that. Now, now but you, was it the feds? Yeah, it was the feds. Oh, you know what? My bad, my bad. John Gotti did come out of court victorious against feds a couple times. I will say that. John Gotti did do that. He did do that. But even if, even if you're going to say Willie Falcone did it. No, nah, Willie didn't do it. So, but eventually, eventually, they got John ass. How they got him? Surveillance. That's why they're collecting all these things on Diddy. See, back then, they had to tap John Gotti phones. Everywhere he went, they had to tap the phone. Now, all they got to do is get Diddy IG, get his phone, get his video surveillance cameras in his house, get his computer, uh, get whatever computer he used on the private jet, get whatever computer he used when he, when he on a cruise ship, get whatever computer he used when he used a driver serving, you know, get all the video that he ever uses in private, all they got to do is call these companies in and subpoena it and collect it. They ain't got to go in and apply no taps no more. We tap our own phones now. We tap our own lives now. We show our own lives now. Let me tell y'all something right now. And I'm going to tell y'all something later on, man, maybe on the short, about iPhone, about your iPhone, man, so you can start keeping it out your face all the time, all day. It's going to blow your mind, but we ain't going to talk about that right now. I'm telling you, man, you got to keep in mind that when this many people come out saying things, sum up with you. Let's get back into this thing, man. Now, we're going to listen to Jaguar Wright. Y'all know who Jaguar Wright is. Jaguar Wright, been, she been making around. She been saying a bunch of things about a bunch of people. And honestly, <sighs> there's so much fact in what she's saying that if she is, she's embellishing a little bit, she's just embellishing a little bit just for just for the excitement or the view man but there's a lot of fact to some things that to some things that she's saying just logical facts the problem is most most men in america 
black men especially, don't think logically anymore. They think with their feelings. So, oh, oh I'm mad because they trying to charge Diddy. I'm mad because they put Kells up. Man, I didn't feel no way one way or the other. It didn't bother me at all. It didn't bother me when they locked R. Kelly up. It don't, it don't bother me that they raided did. It don't bother me. I'm not in, my emotion are, is attached to the people in my, in my life. My loved ones. You understand? My family, my, my parents, my seeds. That's, that's what my emotion is attached to. You know what I'm saying? And, and not even, I say connected to. My, my emotions ain't connected to what, to what they do to a man that had all these type of accusations go against him forever. Y'all boy didn't have no dad in your lives, man. Let's get back into it, man. Got a couple of, um, all right, Rian, Apple, Apple, appreciate the dime. King Abraham, my brother, salute, appreciate the dime. DJ Fresh, appreciate the dub. No, nah, you're right, B.O.A., we're in a new world. Back in the day, they was getting away with all kinds of things. If you had a 70s or 80s baby in the black community, we got whipped bad by parents. You can't do that anymore. We're in a new world. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. Man, boy, we used to get the paint beat off us, man. I'm talking about for real, boy. We used to get the paint beat off us, man. It was, it was a different thing, boy. Now, boy, sh- boy, you can't even, you can't even yell at them jokers in public no more, for real, man. The, the people be the road up on you. All right, let's get into this thing, man. Let's get back into it. He starts clienteling with Tupac and clienteling with Biggie and doing songs with Biggie and building a working, you know camaraderie with honeycombs and um aka diddler i mean diddy and um why do you give him the honeycombs why why do you give him honeycombs because he smacks so sweet That's <laughs> listen man and, and and i mean i don't know i don't know some of y'all but like under the um, like you know just behind his back Behind his back, man, there's a few people in the instrument who refer to, refer to Diddy as Honeycomb, man. Behind his back? No, they don't call him that to his face. I, I think Curtis might, but I don't know who else would. They don't call him that to his face. But see, here's the thing about it, man. People have been talking behind this dude back for decades, like for years, man. People have been talking behind this dude back. They literally been talking behind his back, calling them things, talking about the things he does. But Diddy was a power player in the industry. So Diddy Diddy had so much pull and power in the industry because think about it. He was attached to Clive Davis. Man, listen, Clive Davis, man, tell me who else left a major record company and started a major record company. J Records was a major record company. Popped off with Alicia Keys. Had a couple of more dope artists. Uh, everything that came off America Idol, he got a Big Rubin. I think he got Clay Aiken. He got everything. Man, listen, he came off a major label and just started another major label because he plugged in like that. And that's Diddy's handler. That's Diddy's guy right there. That's who turned Diddy. So you look out here, man, and it turns into something when the man in front becomes this type of this type of being this type of creature and he doesn't know how to contain himself so he starts to think about this man who the, it was popping back in the day or so we thought i think it was just the songs for us though but look at all that bright colorful eye-catching eye candy popping shit they used to do in them video look at all them colors they were so different it popped but just think about who else would have done that nobody else ever did it and nobody else ever did it since then but let's get back into it man so these are the type of thing we thought about back then like man man why they wearing these shiny suits like this man and but i'm from the south you know damn well man we were gonna wear no shiny suits we might, we might, back then, we might put on some Jabos in the jersey, but we ain't finna do that. All right, let's get back into it, man. Official Rico Finesse. Big Meech, too, respectfully. The world's BMF. Yep. That Bill boy. 2009, when he spent 48 hours at Diddy's house to show Diddy the songs he had produced. And how old was Justin at that time? 15. Meanwhile, Diddy was 40 years old with kids. During the 48 48- Y'all, y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. Let's go back. Y'all, I don't think y'all heard that. I don't think, I don't think y'all heard what she just said about Justin Bieber and Diddy. Let's go back. Peep game. When he spent 48 hours at Diddy's house. To- 
Man, hold on. Uh, why do you give him the honeycombs? Why, why do you give him honeycombs? Because he smacks so sweet. That's All right, let's listen to this. Let's listen to how he interact with Justin Bieber. But it is going to go on. When he spent 48 hours at Diddy's house to show Diddy the songs he had produced. And how old was Justin at that time? 15. Meanwhile, Diddy was 40 years old with kids. During the 48 hours Justin spent with Diddy, Diddy showed him a swanky Lambo, promising he would give it to him when he turned 16. He also promised Justin a mansion once he turned 18. Of course, he said all this as a little jokey joke, but joke or not, why would you, as an adult, promise a teenager such extravagant gifts? It's like Grooming 101. Promise the victim extravagant gifts to keep them hooked and trust you. It's weird enough that a 40-year-old and a 15-year-old are hanging out in whatever capacity. But when you add promising a kid gifts like that, it seems way too creepy. Now, I'm going to keep it a book with y'all, man. She may have embellished that with her voice and all of that and a whole bunch of speculation and all that. But I'm going to be honest with you. When we when you see the rest of this when you see the rest of this, and you see the interaction between them when Justin got older, and then you see the interaction between and then you we're gonna hear just just keep watching man just keep watching because right now that just may seem like a little man ain't nothing wrong with that man what you talk, man y'all just doing blah blah blah, put a one in the chat if you'd have ever been at your house by yourself. With a 15-year-old that wasn't your son or your nephew or your little your little cousin or your niece or something. Put it in there. Put a one in the chat if you'd have ever been at home by yourself in any capacity with a 15-year-old boy or girl who wasn't your relative. And even then, the only relative you've been at home with by yourself is, that's 15 is your son or your daughter you have never been at home by yourself with your cut with your little cousin that's 15 you have never been at home by yourself with your little niece that's 15 maybe with your nephew maybe with your nephew like if you if you if your sister you know she going she, she got to live at home or, or she you know she got to come live with you or some you, you never know how that works out maybe your nephew but not your cousin not your neighbor only your child, just your child. You ain't gonna never see me with a 15 year old that didn't, that, that, listen, that I didn't create ever, ever. It's not going to happen. So when you think about that, if, if you can't see how suspect that shit is, man, nobody is, uh, nobody is comfortable. It's not a situation that should happen. It's weird. So for you to be comfortable in that situation, boy, you ain't thinking with your mind, boy. So let's get back into this. That wasn't enough. Let's watch another Justin Bieber clip. What's up, man? Is this interaction Diddy and Justin had on? Hey, listen, bro. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, man. I don't care what nobody say. That's how a sucker checks his girl. Listen, Marty Mart, y'all remember, I should have put that clip in here. I hadn't thought about it, boy, I didn't think about it. Y'all remember on Martin. If you never seen Martin, if you're too young to know about Martin, Martin, the, the, um, Martin Lawrence's show, go on there and look at Jerome Rome and say Jerome Rome and Pam. And you're going to hear him say, John. What's the matter? You can't call nobody. That's what that's what people say who are intimately involved say to one another. A man might say that to a woman. A woman might say that to a man. But you never hear. Look how he checked that young dude. Look how nervous he got. Look how he kept cutting his eyes at the camera. Like I wonder, do they know what's going on? Because he knew how weird it felt. I don't want to hear nobody telling me, man, that that dude ain't doing that, man. They just trying to bring him down. If you say that, then you think he should be able to get away with doing the shit that he's done. And let me ask you something. You got a son? Would it be okay? If, would it be would it be okay if that was your son at the house with him? You got a daughter? Would it be okay if that was your daughter at the house with him? Would it be okay if Kels was trying to marry your fourteen year old daughter and changing her name? How much money would you take to let Kel marry your fourteen year old daughter? Change her age so he can't get jammed up. How much money would you take? 
How much money would you take to let your son go live with go live with Diddy? We gonna see another boy when and live with him when he boy. We pulling this thing together because not because we trying to bring a man down. We putting this shit together because we ain't trying to lift a man up that don't deserve to be lifted up. This man don't deserve to be lifted up. He's been lifted up for 20 years, 30 years now. It's time for him and these actions to bring him down now. You don't get to keep living like this and stay up forever. That's what's wrong with black men in America. You don't care. As long as his skin looks the same as yours, he should be able to walk around. That's why you let a man be in your neighborhood, done took your brother out, and you ain't going to do nothing. He riding around in your city. You ain't going to do nothing to him. You ain't going to tell the people. He just riding around in your city and you looking at him because you stupid. And you think everybody should get away with everything until you do something don't get away with it, and then you behind the wall. Then you're feeling some kind of way about it, right? You understand that now everybody don't get away with something. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, if white men get away with it, we should get away with it. Okay, that what you want to do? So let me ask you this. How come you don't say, if the white man become a billionaire, we should become a billionaire? If the white man going to take over industry, we should take over industry. If the white man going to take over politics, we should take over politics. If the white man going to build jails and put us in it, we should build jails and put them in it too. You don't never say that. It's only the dirt darber shit that you want to say. Well, you know, well, they take people out all the time. You, you know, well, we should be able to do it too. Well, you know, well, well they steal all the time. Well, 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 we should be able to steal too. You know, no, well, they mess with young people all the time. Well, well, we should be able to do it too. Bishop Eddie Long shouldn't have got in trouble because the Pope be doing stuff all the time. I actually heard somebody say that. I actually heard somebody say that black folks should leave Bishop Eddie Long alone because of what the Popes be doing in the Catholic Church. I want y'all to think about that for a minute. Now let's get into this thing, man camera where Diddy is asking Justin why he never calls or tries to hang out with him. Justin looks so uncomfortable hey, hold up, man. the whole hold up, man. Hey, hold up. I gotta watch this again. Creepy. Man. We gotta watch this again, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna let it play all the way through this time. Hey listen man, listen. <laughs> that dude that dude man uh now what she said man ain't ain't she said he probably wouldn't have been comfortable hanging out with him. What well, else before he knew who he was? Now when you see him, think about this. What's the first thing Diddy said? Man, I see you selling out arenas now, going on tour, selling all these records. You're changing up. Diddy ran up on him. And when you look at Diddy's face, man, Diddy wasn't happy. He was checking him. He was checking him about how come you don't call me no more? How come you don't hang out with me no more? How come you don't come through no more? I brought you to my house. You, you saw the Lamborghini. You did all that. I thought we had fun. That's, that's his mindset. I thought we had fun. Well, yeah, it's fun for you. Why would it be fun for him? Why would it be fun for him? Man, that boy, man, listen, man, that, that boy was shook. He was, listen, there wasn't nobody that's cool with you. Man, what's up with you, bro? Man, man, good to see you, dog. Man, man, listen, man. Hey, so what, what you doing? Man, let's go hang out. Let's go. Let's. That wasn't that. That was, uh, I, are you really checking me about this? Man, you you know what you did? Oh, oh well, you didn't, you didn't get my, uh, the people, um, uh, 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 uh the people, they went, I, 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 I don't, uh, Shit, he couldn't even get his words out, man. Oh, that wasn't enough for y'all. Let's get into another, another Justin Bieber and Diddy clip. Y'all gonna learn. Hard for me being that young and being in the industry and not knowing where to turn and everyone, you know, telling me they love me and, you know, just turn their back on you in a second. Um, so if she ever needs me, I'm gonna be here for her, but... Um, but yeah, just protecting those moments because people take for granted, uh, encounters and, um, I just want to protect her. People take for granted encounters. 
Encounters, that's two people meeting together, two people coming together, groups of people coming together. An encounter is always meeting something. And he's saying people take for granted encounters, which means people take for granted encounters with other people. So those people took for granted how they were affecting his life. And now he's a troubled dad. He's just, oh, man, I got a protector. I got a protector because he knows he probably had good parents. His parents didn't know the people were going to do that to him. They didn't know. And if they did know, they got paid so much that they just let him go. So he could be talking about the industry and his parents. And his parents. I'm quite sure Lil felt somewhere about her parents. When you realize that your parents sold you into that situation. Let me tell you something, bro. What is that? If your parents sold you into a situation, what is that? Same thing with Beeb. If his parents sold him into that, what is that? If Usher mom sold him into that, what is that? You can't trust them either. All right, let's get into it, man. Let's get into it, man. We, all right, that wasn't enough for you. That wasn't enough for you. All right, we got another Justin Bieber. He can't even look at him. Look how Justin head down, man. He can't even look at him. Look at him rubbing on him, man. Man, let me tell you something, bro. I wish another man would talk to me with his hand on my damn chest like that. I wish another man would talk to me and touch me at all, bro. I don't even like nobody who be doing this. Man, you ever been around somebody, man? I, I had to, um, it wasn't really my partner. He used to, um, he was an right, dude. He used to live up the street from me. He used to wash my cars and shit. So, man, he, 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 when he talked, man, he just, he do this little hitting you on the shoulder thing. That little, that little shoulder thing, man. So, first, I slid away from him. Man, he came and did it again, man. Man, I blew. I like, oh man, why in the hell you keep touching me, homie? Talk with your mouth, man. Don't keep tapping me, bro. Man, don't never. That's why, man, if you see me, if 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 the only place to sit in a room is, let's say there's a sofa there, a sofa there, a sofa there, and a sofa there. It's a big room. There's four sofas in there. If one of them ain't empty, I'm not sitting down. Man, I'm not sitting on no sofa right beside no dude, man. Cause I don't even want you to start doing this. You try to talk to me, man, you start tapping my leg, dog. Man, dog, don't touch me, man. What's wrong with you? Just even that little tap right there, man. Dog, I just, for me, man, I'd rather just stand up, man. I, I mean, I ain't, I ain't such a lazy dude that can't stand up, man. I'll stand up or I'll, I'll catch a bar stool or something, man. I'll go sit away from the crowd to catch a bar stool somewhere, man. For me, Dog, I just don't be liking the way dudes interact, man. Dog, I ain't never talk to nobody and tap them like that. When, when I ain't never talk to nobody and tap their leg like that. Never. That shit is weird shit to me, man. Why y'all touching so much, man? I wasn't raised like that, man. So anyway, let's get back into this thing, man. Mr. Never Beg, you ain't lying, man. It is. I see said ain't so in the building too. Mr. Never Beg in the building. Said ain't so in the building. What's up with you, man? All right, let's get back into this thing, man. Let's slide back into it. Uh, you know what? This is an interesting comment right here. Rian Apple Apple. Most high level, rich, and famous has a second home outside of America and Europe to escape the matrix is necessary, plus out of sight, out of mind. Man, let me tell you something, bro. A lot of people, when you see them get famous, they want to unplug from the industry, they go somewhere. You go all the way back. Tina Turner, man, once she left Ike, man, she bounced. She wasn't even in the States no more. She got the hell out of America. They didn't even come back unless you come back to tour. Like, when you get outside of the West, you get a chance to understand what the world really is. Like, we don't live in the real world. We live inside the trick box. Like, our whole life is TV. Our life is TV on steroids. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything is. When you think about this, how often do you see a wreck where somebody didn't got, you know, where somebody didn't make it? 
How often you see a wreck where somebody didn't make it? How often do you see somebody get blown away? Know what I'm saying? How many times do you see somebody pull something out, man, and end somebody's life? I never see it. I never see it. But if you watch the news, you'll see that shit from all over the world. If you watch long enough, they'll show you all the catastrophes, the catastrophes from all over the world. Well, here's the thing. You talk to somebody in, in, in Zimbabwe, all they know about America is rumors, dog. They don't know shit that go on over here. This is the only country where everything from all around the world is at your fingertip to be reported. And we live in this, we live in this fear-mongering matrix where the main thing is to make you scared, to make you think about something, to make you fear something. Because when you're living in fear, you can't think logically. Fear is an emotion, a very powerful emotion, too. All right, let's get back into it, man. So, y'all got it? Is that enough for Justin Bieber? All right. Now, I want you to watch all them on stage. Look at that man go up and smack. Why is he going up smacking that man on the butt twice? Hey boy, we got to look at that one more time, man. We got to look at that one more time. This is Diddy on stage with Jay, you know, and a couple more other artists, man. And he the only man on stage worrying about going on stage, smacking the man on the butt twice. Bro, let me tell you something. And this is real talk. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I quit playing sports. I quit playing sports. Because from the time I was a little kid, I was always raised. You never let another man touch your butt. I was just raised that way. Never let another man touch your butt. And I, just, I quit playing sports, man, because it was just a part of the game. It's just part of the game. Like somebody come up, man, smack you on the butt, man. Dog, let me tell you, I smack my brow on the butt. Always have. I always had me some thick chunked up, man. I always smack my bra on the butt. You mean tell me I'm finna let you do to me what I do to her? Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way. So let's get into this 50 clip, man. Now I want you to watch all them on stage. Look at that man go up and smack. Why is he going up smacking that man on the butt twice? That boy fit to say 20 machine guns only get 10 months. Did it in the back, patting on niggas' butts. Nah, I ain't with it. I ain't never been with it. <laughs> listen, listen, man. When you think about it, bro. When you think about it, man, you got to understand one thing, man. When your lifestyle is what it is. See, let me tell you something. When you live a private life, when you do something behind closed doors, you can separate it from your from open doors and closed doors. When you start to do something outside of the club when you open the door and do it listen even if you don't come outside the door when you open the door where people can walk by and see what you're doing in there it's not behind closed doors anymore and so those actions start to become normal to you in everyday life everything you do and this is just an instance of that like there's no reason to go on stage uh, man you're not an athlete when man, when when have you ever seen anybody, any any rapper, any R and B star, any country star, any rock star, anywhere, go on the stage and smack a man's butt twice? I just want y'all to think about it. Y'all say, man, that ain't nothing. Well, how come nobody else ever did the shit if it ain't nothing? How come we ain't seen nobody else with a fifteen year old boy in his house by itself? How come we ain't never seen another man in the industry run up on a boy? And here's the thing. We don't know what they do, but did it the only one on video doing it. So if I'm the only one, if you're the only one I see doing it, until I see different, you're the only one that's doing it. It's not like he's doing what everybody else does. We don't see other people do this. And let's not forget, let's not forget that that girl who got popped at that club when Shine got jammed up, that girl said over and over again that Diddy was the one who popped her. Even back then, she said it. Shine, when he did that time, came back, got deported. It was over. As soon as he got out, deported. He ain't say nothing from over there. Why? Everybody got a price. These are, th these are things that can, I mean, you, you can, 
Well, maybe you can't just find it anywhere. But this information is out there, man. Go ahead. All right, so here we're going to do, man. We're going to get into now Kanye is going to speak about why he doesn't have to do things that everybody else does. And this is going to make a lot of sense to you. They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce. Well, not you, man. But they can't control me. And this truth is going to be heard. Y'all can't send none of y'all meek mills, y'all puppies, y'all little boozies, none of these names, none of these people that have to listen to y'all because they're dealing with, they have legal, I never killed nobody, right? I'm the pussy that never killed nobody, right? But that means I can say whatever I want and not go to jail. Let me tell y'all something, bro. That's a lot. And I'm a, people saying Kanye, they calling him crazy, they calling him all that. I'm going to tell you what I, I see when I look at Kanye. I see a man that's liberated. I see a man that detached himself from them Kardashians. You know what I'm saying? He could have stayed with that clan. But I, I do believe that Kanye, and I don't know this for a fact, but I do believe that Kanye got to a crossroads with them Kardashians. And he said, oh, hell no. Nah. Because you know what? Because not shortly after that, they start spending him. They start spending him, took his net worth down. But here's the thing about Kanye. Kanye don't care nothing about being the biggest billionaire. Because let me tell you what Kanye found out. Kanye found out that if you're a billionaire, if there's a black billionaire and a white billionaire, and you're trying to get into the fashion industry, and you're trying to get into the industries, they don't care about your money at that point. They're going to keep certain things established just the way they are. Some things will never be integrated. Some things you'll never be a part of. That's just a fact. We're the only ones who don't who don't go their way. You go to a you go to a uh, you go to a, 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 a Spanish speaking society or Mexican society or you go to Puerto Rico. You go there are certain parts of that environment that you will never get in as a black man ever. There's just certain parts they're not going to let you in because it, it, it is it's exclusive. We don't have anything exclusive to us. Nothing. There's nothing exclusive to us except. Not even, we don't even have poverty and crime exclusive to ourselves. We don't have nothing exclusive to ourselves except our skin. And we don't like it. We hate it. That's why it's so easy for me to point my, for, that's why it's so easy for, for one brother to point his weapon at another one and they both just take each other out because they don't even value this. That me, I value this, boy. But, but look at that perfect brown complexion. Man, look at that perfect brown complexion. If you ask a woman what's her favorite color in a man, this is it. This it, man. I'm telling you. Call your girl to the computer right now and ask her. Even if you light skin, call and ask her. And then watch her face when she responds. Don't do that, man. I'm just, I'm just messing with y'all, man. Don't do that. Don't do that, man. Then don't be talking about, man, be away, man. Man, you done ruined my house up. Don't do that, bro. Don't do it. So listen. Let's get into this next one, man. Y'all remember what, what, what Kanye said? Now, now we're going to get into this interview where Charlemagne on The Breakfast Club Ask Diddy about his interaction with Fab and Jada and Nori. First, he said he don't remember it. Then he said, man, I'm just about love, man. I'm just about love. But let's see what kind of love he about, man. Peep game. And Fab and Jada and mm. everybody, they made a compilation video of you because they said you were signing real suspect mm. on, the, on the interview. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course, nah. I didn't see that. No, nah, I didn't. Hey, man, listen, man. My, uh... My aunt, see that, that jack, I don't even know if that's a jacket or a robe. My aunt had a robe like that, man. That jacket he got on, my aunt had a robe just like that. See it? You didn't see it? I swear to God. Oh, Come yeah. on, man. You saw hey, that on World hey, Star. Hey, hey, check, check, check this out. When they started playing the game, the pause game, I would definitely. That came from Harlem, too, by Yeah, it came from Harlem. I definitely. Would say some, oh my, whoa, the crowd would be like, whoa, did he just say that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games. Y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. But, um, yeah. That man said, I'm a grown man. I don't play games. Y'all know how I get down. I don't hide it. I don't even hide it. I started to put the clip of uh, Birdman, man, on stage, man. Uh, uh, I can't him and Cash Money. That's when all of them were still together. Man, they, that was somewhere. And, uh, man, they was calling girls. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, Juvie started saying, hey, man, let's call some girls up on the stage, man. Man, that boy Baby said, look. That boy Brian said, hey, 
Them three, them, them three right there, man. Man, they been with me all day, man. Bring them up here, man. Bring them up here. Man, BG said, what the what? Juvie said, man, it's time to get some holes up here, man. You know what? I'm going to play that clip for you. I'm going to find that clip. I got it somewhere, man. No, I got. It. I did a video on it before. But anyway, man, so that's the clip. And, man, he still would, like, bring them up. He tuned them out. He was like, no, they been messing with me all day. Bring them on up here, man. All them girls in there screaming, man. He want them three dudes to come up there. Why? Because he had already got the 30 million. Then he already got the 100 million. And he started calling his company Cash Money Billionaires. He was already thought he was untouchable. Why? Because he had so much money that he could stay away from his enemies. Let me tell you something, man. When you got so much money that you can stay away from your enemies, you start to feel a little bit more powerful because you don't have the concerns of your enemies. They can't touch you. They can't be where you are. They can't come where you are. I mean, even if you right around them, they still can't touch you because you got enough paper to be armied up whenever you come around. You got a full platoon with you. And so you start to live your life in the open. And you, you don't care what people say because you live in your own world. You're looking at everybody else like, hey, man, y'all beneath me, y'all peons. You start to look at people only for their benefit to you. So people start becoming commodities to you and not people anymore. So that's just what you do. That's how you interact with them. So anyway, man, let's get back into this thing, man. All right. Let's finish this, man. Now, <laughs> let's see this whole clip, man, where, where he, uh, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to make it through the whole thing, man. But it's so, man, it's so hilariously toxic, man. Let's get it. Did the you compilation? Go? Nah, I was... I was coming off of being in Miami a night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, you my daddy, yeah, I like when you when you're scrambling and scraping for no, 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 no. shit. A few moments later. Ten years later, they tried to do the tour. Um, the best of both. The best. Yeah, oh, but oh, it still didn't this work the out. Dash? But Man, you notice I, I wasn't a part of any of that, but and the karma happens. But the thing I I I meant to take that out, man. I meant to take that out. All right, let's do it. Let's I like it. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, you my daddy, yeah, I like when you oh, when you scrambling and scraping. Hey, yeah, look how Jada look at that. Hey, hold on. Look how Jada watching it, man. Y'all gotta look at how Jada looking at it, man. I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, you my daddy, yeah, I like when you when oh, you scrambling and scraping for shit. I like that. You know, I'll be practicing. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Lee, we, we, yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, I like when you oh, when you scrambling and scraping when you when you scrambling and scraping for shit. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna go over that one. Make a that wish. One? Just blow it out. Your birthday every day. Every day is a birthday on Drink okay. Champs, guys. Now I want y'all to think about this. This is fabulous birthday, but he bought Nori a cake. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I've heard Nori say in an interview before that. He had an opportunity to go through that door where Jay and them went. He, he, he especially called Jay. He said, I had an opportunity to go through that door where Jay and them went and go to the top. But he said when he saw what was through that door, he decided he didn't want to go through it. But the way he did it, acting with him, he must have went through that door at least once and decided enough is enough. I don't want to do it no more. I'm in. Where I look, did you look back me? on where I became. Mm. Did you miss me, though? Mm. For real, because we... I'm saying I miss, it seems like a thing. I miss it's his party birthday with party, Puff, man. man I miss but I'm talking about for your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, mm. No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Eyes, <laughs> eyes. <bro. laughs> hey, hey, man. <laughs> eyes, eyes, brother. Oh, man. Eyes, 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 eyes. Hey, listen, man. Hey man, <laughs> that boy Puff. Hey, that boy Puff, wow, man. Listen, listen, how you asking that dude that? Hey, listen, man, he don't care who in the room. I told you, man, these guys get to live in their life where they don't care what they say, man. He, he, he's sitting there in front of the in front of the room, man, in front of everybody in the room. It's, hey, look, man, let me tell you something, dog. Man, come on, uh, man, let's um man, come on through, man. I mean, how come you won't party with? I'm talking about just me and you, man. We ain't no party. You know, party, party. He talking about the Diddy party that Cat Williams say he don't go to. I'm telling you, bro, man, listen, man. Y'all got to stop acting like this man ain't saying the thing he's saying, man. Yeah, I saw that clip off um, too. Is that my head quote? Yeah. Yeah, man. 
right, man, let's let's get back into it, man. <laughs> let's get back into it, man. Hey, yo, he does, man. He does, man. Like, like, yeah. Fab got the high pitched voice, man. I have party with you before, man. He, he sounded like I just be with Philly, man. Let's check it out. All right. <laughs> what kind of party does he want to have with Fab, hey, man? man? <laughs> Eyes, eyes, brother. Eyes, 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 eyes. I understand. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Yo, okay. So check this out. It's me, Tyrese, Ray J, and F. Gary Gray. You know, I'm a type of nigga. I like variety, man. I like people that's unpredictable. I, you know, what I'm saying. I like different personalities. So I was like. I never knew they would become what they are today. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But like, you know. Now, I just caught that part for the first time, man. He is really sitting here saying he was with those guys before they blew up. He said, I didn't really know they would become who they became. So he had all of those young guys out there, F. Gary Gray, Tyrese, and Ray J. Man, you know Ray J, I think Ray J a little bit younger than them. Ray J, he, Ray J was kind of young then, man. He had all them out there talking about he liked variety before they ever blew up. Man, that, this 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 same dream that they say he was selling Justin Bieber with the with the Lamborghini. I'm telling you, man. Listen, that I've heard this clip several times, and that's my first time catching it. That Diddy client that Diddy said he admitted that he had F. Gary Gray, Tyrese, and Ray J when they were young before they even blew up. Man, think about this. Man, the first time we saw Ray J, he was just making cameos on uh, on um, Brandy show Moesha. He was he he was nobody. He was Brandy little brother. You know what I'm saying? When you think about that, man, how man that boy, man, listen, bro. Now see, y'all can't be denying this type of shit. Y'all can't be denying this, man. That man off, man. That man got something going on in him, dog. He's 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 been overcome with a, a a a carnal lust for something that's evil, man. That's wicked, and he's got enough paper where he feel like he could just do it as much as he wants to. Let's get back into it, man. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounded like the type of night I want to have in Vegas. You right. know what I'm saying? Okay. Hey, I want y'all to look and see. That's the only time Fab ate some cake. Hey, you, hey, you know somebody said some foul, man. When, when, when you got to, when you got to do something different with your life. Variety, man. I like people that's unpredictable. Uh -huh. I, you know, what I'm saying I like different personalities. So I was like, I never knew they would become what they are today. <laughs> but you yeah. know, what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, you know. Mm -hmm. I, that sounded like the type of night I want to have in Vegas. You right. understand what I'm saying? Hey, listen, man. He pushed his plate back. Man, he, hey, he spoiled, hey, I see what happened, man. He spoiled Fab Appetite. Fab was killing that cake, man. He was killing it. Man, that boy said that. That what kind of party you like to have? He said, damn. Didn't the fool just ask me why I ain't parted with him like that? That's why Fab kind of got things changed for Fab. Because he's like, this nigga just asked me how come I don't never party with him. Say, you don't hear yourself, fool? This why I don't party with you. This why I don't never party with you. I ain't coming to your party. I ain't gonna do it, Diddy. I ain't coming, dog. Man, let me tell y'all something. In this real talk, man. This real talk. Unless you was known in all through the neighborhood for blowing the most trees, there's no reason for a grown man to call himself Puff Daddy. I want y'all to think about that. Puff, who calls themselves Puffy? Think about that, man. Then with all these things, let's get back into it, man. Let's finish this thing up, man. It's crazy. Hmm. My bad. I took it off screen, man. So Tyrese kept man, on talking. This is a fight. This is a Floyd fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tyrese mm -hmm. keep on talking about like how you got to get back to church. 
And we just like, yo, the night ain't start. You got to get back for church. We in motherfucking <laughs> Vegas, nigga. We're like, you can go to church next week. You know what I'm saying? Sending your, send your thing. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing but we in Vegas. Don't be bringing God <laughs> into the city. Don't church. bring a God, God into this situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Every Gray is like. That boy said, don't be bringing God into this situation. Man, who that sound like? Who have you ever heard say, don't be bringing God into this situation? We finna do something so foul, so wicked, just a mention of God. Gonna mess everything up. Don't, this ain't a situation for God, dog. Leave your God outside. This door right here. We got, I told y'all like variety. I got all y'all here with me. I'm finna have a blast. See, here's the thing. Now he has to hire people because no one in the industry is dealing with Puff. Think about this. Look at how people rock it with 50. Look at how they rock it with Jay. Nicki Minaj got in her feelings because they signed um, Megan to Rock Nation and not her. She was lobbying to be signed to Rock Nation because Rock Nation, if you sign to Rock Nation, you're going to pop, period. You're going to pop if you sign to Rock Nation. Everybody who signed to Rock Nation pops off. And Nicki, trying to, she trying to recover. She's trying to recover that shine. You know, she had a single that did okay, but it was on the back of Megan, but they chose Megan. Nikki washed. I ain't gonna say she washed, but she the old version of Megan. She's the older version of who goes and gets the older version. Man, let me tell you something. When have you ever had a car and the new model came out and you said, I ain't gonna get the new model. I'm gonna go get the last model before mine. Never. So when you think about it, everybody want to go over there. Everybody want to get with 50. Look at all the people he casting on these shows. Everybody want to be a part of what he got going on. I mean, he's casting new actors, old actors, you name it. He's taking actors that wasn't cast on nothing before, putting them in movies. Look at Monique, Black Ball, threw in some. That's what he's doing. People want to work with him. Man, who in the hell trying to work with this guy? Don't nobody want to be around him anymore. We're talking about a billionaire that nobody's trying to link up with on nothing. Oh, nothing. No, well, you know, um, yes, new people are like new podcasters. Yeah, they'll go over to Revolt. But how many people you see over there, man, that's really like Young Miami will go over there? Yeah, of course. Of course, Young Miami going to go over there. That's she, she, I mean, she wanted to did the jump off. She wanted, she, she wanted to did the money jump offs. So I want y'all to understand, man, you got to plug all these things in together. And let's finish listening to this, man. I'm not going to stop it anymore, man. Let's finish listening to it. Shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then you got um Ray J. So Ray J is like just really like feeling like Ray J right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, man. <laughs> hey, Ross, the dude getting out the way, man. Man, this. this. Man, no, 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 bro. Come tell the story. Bro, 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 we're intoxicated. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, oh, we'll oh bro, we help me rebuild that yeah, beautiful, yeah, nice bro, guy, Rastafari brand of yours, huh? Yeah. I, I see in, you, man. I'm walking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want y'all to. Now, I want, I want you to think about what he just said. That Rastafari wouldn't come by. Rasta man, we wouldn't come by him. The last thing did he say, well, I see you trying to build that big, beautiful brand of yours. I see you. And you know what he did? He said, man, I'm trying to build my brand. I'm not finna sit nowhere near this dude talking like this. Y'all can stay, y'all Americanized, weak-minded, like I'm talking about, man, ain't gonna fight for nothing unless you online, Twitter finger. Man, you ain't gonna fight for nothing. Y'all stay over there. I'm finna get up and walk away. I'm not finna be seen on camera with this dude talking about these things that he was doing and these other guys that like, they don't even know what he's talking about. Rastafari done figured it out. Hold up, man. You, 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 you got all this paper, you influential, and you got all these young guys around, man, before they had the opportunity. Man, look at Tyrese. Look at, look at how often he cry all the time. Look at Will Smith. Look at how often he cry all the time. These guys had to make their way through that industry, man. And I'm telling you, bro, it's, it's, as you become a man, 
the masculinity in you is going to be, man, it's going to be so confused if you have to go through this. And you're going to have some emotional issues. Look at how Justin Bieber broke down. Tyrese can't talk about nothing without breaking down. I don't know why I keep Grab that man's hand and put him back. Don't do that. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. Let me pick it up. Was I was talking to him. Look, man, he, he got that man's hand. Like, he, who grabs a man's hand and pull him back? Grab that nigga. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did man, man killing. Yo, man. Yo, yo, yo. Did he try to check that man? Y'all. Y'all, he just tried to check that man wood, dog. Look at this man. Pull him back. Grab that nigga. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did man, man grew. 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 Dog, man, hold up, man, hold up, hold up, hold up. One more, dog, he lifted, man, he lifted, man, join up, man, try to look at his wood, dog. That's crazy. He game, man. Was was look, man, he, he got that man's hand, dog. Like, he, who grabs a man's hand and pull him back? Man, look, bro. Did man Come tell the story. Bro, bro, we, bro, we intoxicated. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, oh, oh bro, we have we build that. Just said we nice guy. Guy. That's always the spot. Our brand of yours, huh? Yeah. I, I see, in, man. I'm walking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy birthday, yeah, yeah, yeah. birthday yeah. to you. Woo! Happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday. This is fabulous. <laughs> the only nigga that got the name that I want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, my brother. Um, yeah. I want y'all to think. He ain't talking about fabulous name. He talking about the only, the on, the man with the the only man with the name that I didn't get that I want, not the name, the only man that I didn't get that I want. That man called himself Puff Daddy. He ain't want to call himself Fabulous. He want to call himself Puffy. Puffy was a man. Puffy was around before Fab popped off. So how he why he ain't call himself fabulous? He ain't talking about the name. The man literally just asked him, "How come you don't party with me?" Then he ended off the night saying happy birthday to him and said, "The only man who got the name that I want, but didn't get. The only man with the name that I want, that I wanted, but didn't get. Come party with me, Fab." Man, let me tell y'all something, brothers. You could deny this all you want to, but I don't really care because if you deny it, man, then you, you need to check yourself. Everything, everything I'm saying is obvious, man. Take a shot for that boy. <laughs> that boy, wow. <laughs> hey, hey, that boy did it wild, man. Hey, did it wild boy, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. He a wild boy. Now, was that enough for you? Because I'm going to be honest with you, that was a pretty long clip. It was a bunch going on in that clip. But the thing I want you to see is how the Rastafara is the only man who got up from the table. Well, I don't even know who that man is, but he ain't an industry nigga. Them other boys, they industry. So they sat there. They sat there because they ain't know nothing else to do. You know why? Because all the while he been active in the industry like that and they knew about it, they just sat there. Everybody you hear, you never heard anybody say, hey, man, I tried to check Puff about this. You couldn't. He was too powerful. You know what they did? They just stayed away from the party. Here's the thing about it. Everybody who was at that party, they say Jake's was at it. I don't know, but that's what they say. I, wouldn't, I do know. I saw Jake's in the picture. We did at one of the parties. They say everybody was there. All these people were there. But they don't call it a T.D. Jakes party. They don't call it the L.A. Reid party. They don't call it the Clive Davis party. They don't call it a Jamie Foxx party. They call it a Diddy party. So no matter who went, he was hosting the parties at his spot. That boy was like a madam at a brothel. When the fans come in, they're going to take the girls for participating. They're going to take you for Rico for running the continual criminal organization. That's what they're going to do. Man, listen, bro, let me tell you something. Y'all got to understand the reality of this situation. This man hosted the parties. It don't, man, listen, it don't matter what you want to be a part of. It's one thing to be a part of something and get an invite. 
It's another thing to have the shit attached to your name. It was attached to the dude's name. All right, let's get back into this, man. So let's check this thing about about we're gonna listen to Meek. It's gonna be a quick one with Meek, though. Just listen. Here's another here's another one, man. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Now I'm be honest with you. Say what you want to say. I, the 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 Rick Ross the, the Ross and, and, and Diddy that just a that just a bad no no I'm gonna be honest with you man. The, I think that that just a bad angle. I don't think they were that close to each other. I think they just framed. They couldn't have been that close to each other. Ain't no way, man. If they were that close to each other in real life, yeah, yeah. That, I, don't, I doubt that they were finna kiss on stage though, man. Or maybe they got caught in the moment. I don't know, bro. But that picture of him with Stout. Both of them got on pink shirts, and he's sitting with him in a picture like that. Come on, bro. In pink shirts, who take a picture like that? See, I, I see. I don't know if the picture with Ross and Diddy. I don't know if that's two pictures, or a picture of Diddy and a picture of Ross that they just, you know, that they put together like that. That they, you know, they 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 doctored online just to make a meme. I don't know if that, cause I mean, I don't keep up with the guys, so I've never seen them on stage together. Or anything like that but that looks like two separate pictures that they took and tried to pay, put together like that is what i'm saying i don't think they were even on stage at the same time like that but when you see this picture with him and stout man that's a weird picture right there that's a weird picture man i i just can't understand why two men will be taking and then both of them got on pink shirts come on bro why would two guys be taking that picture and they all cheese this too man I don't know, bro. I ain't never took a picture with a dude like that in my life. Put a one in the chat, man. You ever took a picture with a dude? Man, I don't even think me and my girl even ever took a picture like that, man. That's that that, that looked like, you know, like a, a, a an arranged photo shoot, man. No boy, no man, no boy sitting in Walmart taking pictures. They done call they done call uh what is it, Nolan? I can't remember what it is, man. They done called the photographer, man, to come taking pictures on, man. But let's get back into this, man. So now we're going to hear Aaron Hall, and this is the energy of these guys. I want you to listen to how this guy is bragging about this, all the shit he's accomplished in his life. This is his bragging point. Y'all peep game on it. A whole lot of niggas out there from Jamie Foxx to, like, <laughs> Denzel Washington to, yeah. to whoever. Everybody know me. Yeah. So sure everybody do. know if I say it, I'm going to fuck it to to death. I yeah. like the fucking public, you feel me? Yeah. So niggas can't say nothing about it. Them square ass niggas, them precious cake little niggas. Yeah. I like for them <laughs> to see how I fuck. Like if you speak yeah. to Joe to see or Puffy or not, any of them niggas, yeah. they been at my house. They all see me fuck. They all know I'm a big Man, listen, bro. I want you to think about how openly this man is bragging that these other men have watched him be intimate with a woman. That these other men know about his wood. And he's he's bragging about and you hear the other dude like, yeah, yeah. Like, what is this weirdo talking about? That's the society we live in right now. We live in a society where everybody is controlled by their loins. Man, listen, I talk to people, and, and listen, and I'm not even and it, it don't affect everybody in the society. Man, I talk to couples from um, you know, Caucasian couples, man, Hispanic couples. Uh, Asian couples. I talk to African couples, um, Caribbean couples. I talk to I talk to couples all the time. Like that's part of what I do. And so, you know what I ask them a lot, man. I ask them, oh, oh, what we discuss a lot is how easy it is and how quick it is for Americans to, for American black people to get divorced. Now, other people get divorced, too, but that's what they're saying. How easy it is for two people just to not be apart and not that not children don't have a family over not being able to control your lust, over not being able to control your desires, over not being able to control your body. So think about the logic of being in a situation that you spend years building 
and you've got all this time, effort, and energy invested into it, and then suddenly, because let's say if let let's look at it from a man perspective. Let's say suddenly, let's say because your let's say your wife end up um, she have an accident and she down for like let's say she have an accident, she break her hips. She down for for months, almost a year. You can't. I mean. She can't even move her legs. They cast it up. Ain't that you can do? Ain't that you could do? You just gotta, you gotta work with it. She gotta learn to walk again and everything, man. She can't lift her legs. You can't lift them. She can't stay in the pain. What you gonna do? You gonna leave your wife and your kids and your family because of that? You can't control yourself for a little while. And what about you, women? You gonna be with a man? He gonna be, he gonna be providing and protecting, doing all that. Let's say the man, um. Let, let's use the military guys, or even the truck drivers. Let's say the man got to be on the road. He got to be on the road 22 days out of a month. And, and, and he got to be out of town for seven days. Then he got to be out of town for eight days. Then he got to be out of town for eight, for, for seven days. In between there, you may get a day or two here and there. You mean tell me you can't control what between your leg long enough for that man to get out there and get that money and come back home? That's the environment we live in, dog. And that's the environment that creates these guys like this who grow up like this and then turn around and put this. I don't care what grown folk do with grown folks. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. Cassie was, now nah, she was kind of young when he got it. He was, she was like 19. But for the gist of when, you, for when she was 19, thing probably was good till she turned 21. The novelty of it with that, she was still young. Probably she's turned about 25. Then when she got a little bit older, man, of course, thing probably changed, but she chose to stay. That's okay. That's cool. He, he caught her young. He male influenced her a little bit. But when she got to the point where she knew better, she should have left. She ended up leaving anyway. But when it comes to these adults dealing with these youngsters, dog, man, I don't have no sympathy for that. No sympathy. They should throw the book at you. I don't care if, if it ain't near true, but you're one of them. They should throw the book at you, dog. They should put you, they should put you in a jail that's inside another jail. So if you escape one, you're still locked up. No sympathy for that. None. None. Matter of fact, if that's what you've done, then I hate you. The Alpha Sphere hates people like you. The most destructive people in the world are people who mislead children, people who steal children wrong, people who alter children's vision on life and their expectation of life before they even get a chance to understand what their expectation should be. All right, so let's get into Usher. Usher going to talk his talk, too, about what was going on when he was younger with your boy Diddy. So I followed him the whole time. I don't oh, remember Jamie watching Fox, my bad. at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I'm filming this. And it's a pool party that is ridiculous, man. I moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp? Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and... I mean, damn, pause. But, like, that's how... I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before Pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real, we used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes. Now, 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 I want y'all to think, I want y'all to listen to this, we're going to break this down, we're going to break it down like it never been broken down. In the, the 90s, do you understand what that's like? That's my brother right here from day one, we used to wake up and, I mean, damn, Pause, but like that. Now, I want you to think about it. All he said was, we used to wake up. This is my brother. We used to wake up. It makes sense. This is my brother. We used to wake up. He wasn't saying pause for that. He was saying pause for the shit that was about to come out of his mouth. He was saying pause for what was in his head, what he was about to say. Like the same thing he was saying with Fabnim. He got a he got a bottle in his hand. When Diddy drinks, he turns into who he was with Fabulous and Nori. And Fab, with Fab, Nori, and Jada, that's what he turned into. 
He got a bottle in his hand. They chilling. He the only one with a bottle in his hand. So I'm telling you, that boy is a drinker. And when he drinks, he turns into the diddler. He turn. Hey, listen, man, he, he ain't, listen, when he turned into that, he ain't did it no more. He turned back to Puffy when he gets some liquor in him. And now he's talking. So whatever thought was in his mind, it was so vivid of whatever he had going on with this boy. It made him say pause before it even came out his mouth, dog. Damn. That's rough. <laughs> hey, that's rough right there, man. But let's finish this, though. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the Frosted Flakes. You know what I'm saying? Before pause was invented. You know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the... All for the frosted place. It was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And now, I want you to think. He was 13. Diddy said he was like 10. So in Diddy mind, Usher was 10. He was like, there's a big ass difference between 10 and 13. They're like being 18 and 21. It's only three years, but that's a huge difference. Right? It's like being 27 and 30. Huge difference, man. So I want y'all to understand, man, that when you hear this guy talk, he has no limits. Like, it didn't even matter to him if he was talking about him and a 10-year-old waking up in the morning. And listen who listen, listen whose idea it was. Remember now, it was L.A. Reed's idea. I don't know if you know who L.A. Reid is, but L.A. Reid is, to, for, for, to not say handler like a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, man, was his OG. All right? L.A. Reid was his OG. And I ain't talking about OG, man, who, who schooled him on how to navigate life, man, and be, and be a man, not that OG. So when you think about it, L.A. Reid's idea was to send this boy out to Puffy. In New York, Usher from the South, Usher from Atlanta. He would live in Atlanta then. Why would you send that boy all the way out to New York to be with Puffy? Because we see Puffy don't mind having a youngster at his career by himself. You got to be a part of it in order to think that makes sense. And I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, oh, it was so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you, that. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige, they ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh, <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat, or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> I, and what kind of, do you have money? Remember, his parents didn't know. Why didn't his parents know? Because Diddy sold them. It's kind of like Ike sold Tina. Uh, auntie, hey, I got, I got her. I got her. I'm going to take care of her. Here go you a couple of dollars. You sell the parent the same thing, Kells. So are Lil parents. You sell the parents on whatever they need to hear. Why? Because you've got the mind of the youngster. But how easy do you think it was for Kells to have the mind of a Lil when she was that age, bro? This is R. Kelly. He was the man. And R. Kelly wants to make some songs with me. She gone. Cause she thinks she's just going to make songs and her parents know she's talented. She used to be on the little comp the competition shows doing well. This is R. Kelly. He's a hit maker. Let's make our baby's dream come true. Same thing with this. Let's make our boy's dream come true. The crazy thing is man, the album, they, the album he did with him flopped. Then they had to go back down with JD, but we ain't gonna talk about JD on this one. I mean, what's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh, I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no, he wouldn't send his kid to that. Why? There's no, no. 
See, and, and let me tell y'all something, man. Sometimes it's not about what you do to them. Sometimes it's about what you expose them to. Sometimes just seeing this or seeing that, it sparks a mindset in them that's not supposed to come until they get older. You know what I'm saying? If you expose somebody to something that they shouldn't be exposed to yet, if they shouldn't, if if you if I if you expose somebody to some one year and they're not supposed to be exposed to that till five years later, okay, that's five years right there that their mind is already on something that the rest of them isn't ready for. They can't handle it. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know. They're not ready for that. They're not mature enough. Their thoughts are on it, but their mind hasn't embraced it yet. And that's what a lot of these guys are doing, man. I'm telling you. This is how it goes a lot of time, man. And this goes way back, man. Usher is a grown, grown. Hell, Justin Bieber is a grown, grown man right now. And I want y'all to think about it, man. It's crazy out here. Let's get back into it, man. All right, so next, man, we're going to listen to, we're going to look, we're going to watch, we're going to listen to Bieber. We're going to do a couple with Bieber. We'll do a couple with, a couple of more with Bieber. We're going to do what L.A. Reid has to say about Bieber. Now, remember, L.A. Reid is the one that sent Usher out there to Diddy. Let's, let's peep game. Say it again. You have beautiful lips. Oh, thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you, bro. Oh, you have good lips. Thank you. Just wear pants. That man told him, man, listen, there's a man who told Justin Bieber right now, right there, he has beautiful lips. See, so it, it wasn't just Diddy, the industry, all the industry dweebs, man, all the industry weirdos, man, they, they, was, they was on some. Listen, man, they were on some with Justin Bieber, man. I'm telling you, they was on some with him. You know, it was like, man, when he came through, there was like, they here right there. And wherever, dog, look how crazy that is, man. This was this, this dude was young. Yeah, since uh, maybe y'all didn't know what he said, but y'all listen to it this time. Listen to what he says, man. I say it again. You have beautiful lips. Oh, thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you, like, bro. Oh, you have good lips. Thank oh, you. Wait, just wear pants. Yeah, serious. All right, now, L.A. Reid remembers 14-year-old Justin Bieber was beautiful like a woman. I'm going to let that sit there with y'all for a minute. L.A. Reid remembers 14-year-old Justin Bieber was beautiful like a woman. Beautiful like a woman. So what this man is saying, what does a woman's beauty do to a man? What does a beautiful woman's beauty do to you? It sparks certain energy in you. This man saying that it, it come on, bro. I, you read between the lines. You know what he's saying. And it's the same man that sent Usher over the ditty. Is it too much to say? Is it too far-fetched that he sent Justin Bieber over to Diddy too? That year with Justin Bieber right there? Let's see something. Justin's first label. Let's see what it was. Let's see if it was Arista Records. Let's find some out right here. Because I don't know what it was. At age 13, Usher went to Atlanta with Scooter Braun. Bieber began singing for Usher one week later. Bieber was soon signed to Raymond Braun Media Group, a joint venture between Braun and Usher. So let's see who distributed that. We're about to see right now. Okay, Island, Team Boy. Let's see what what L.A. Reid the uh I think L.A. Reid was over um he was over Island Music Group at that time. So I want y'all to understand about how this all plays out. Once if you can get 
Like, if you could get Ush involved, which means, you know, of course, Ush is older than Bieber. Once Ush came back from out there with Diddy, he was a part of the game. Him and Diddy still tight right now. Him and Diddy still tight right now, bro. A lot of things are going to come out about this, man. There's a lot of people that are going to be implicated, especially if Diddy talks. There's a lot of people going to be implicated. So let's get back into this, man. Now, I also want you to look at this and remember L.A. Reid. L.A. Reid, Sony Music Executive L.A. Reid accused of S.A. as well. I want y'all to think about it, man. Listen, birds of a feather flock together. If you live a certain lifestyle, bro, like if you're a jacker, dog, we ain't finna, man, you, I, you could be my brother. If my brother is a jacker, dog, me and my brother ain't finna kick it nowhere. And if he jacks somebody and they lay him down, I ain't doing nothing about it. You supposed to get laid down. Eventually, you're going to run up on somebody and they're going to lay you down because you're trying to take something that don't belong to you. You're trying to take money and food out their family mouth. And they got to defend their family. And somebody might say, well, they're your brother, your family. Not if he doing that, he ain't. I disown that fool. All right, man. So now we're going we're gonna to look at how the industry treats Bieber. So I'm not even telling you that it was just these guys with Bieber. It was everybody with Bieber. But that just lends itself more to the fact that whoever had him around had him around for a reason. You smell amazing. How old are you? Oh, this is more people. Uh, thank you. How old are you? I'm 16. I'll be 17 in like two weeks. I don't ever remember smelling that good at 16. Like I was, that was bad. Yeah. Wow, look at your eyes. Um, uh, what music are you listening to at the moment, Justin? Well, uh, I listen to a lot of different stuff. I'm really into Jessie J, actually. Ah, well, she's here. We're going to get to see her later. Thank you so much. Look at him. Look at him. What a beautiful face. All right. And Man, look, bro, just look. This is this is like on TV in front of people. They listen, bro, can't even contain himself. He just rubbed the boy, man. The, and the fact that all those people know what the hell is going on is a terrible world we live in, dog. It's a terrible world we live in where all those people know what's going on and they're just okay with it. I want y'all, man, y'all just look at how they, man, look at, this is the same thing L.A. Reid did. This this guy is saying the same thing L.A. Reid said. He's beautiful like a girl, man. Just look at it, man. Another instance of the media it's sexualizing here, Justin man. is at the 2011 Brit Awards, where Yo, James this, Corden man. touched Justin's face inappropriately and kept gushing about how 16-year-old Justin smells good and looks good. Justin was clearly uncomfortable during that interaction, but again, it just didn't matter to those people. Let me tell y'all something, man. There's a lot of guys who support this. And my thing is this right here. Whenever it comes out about, yes, I spoke on Harvey Weinstein. I, I, I don't even keep up with the Jeffrey Epstein thing then. But Harvey Weinstein, yeah. I talked about Harvey Weinstein. I talked about another guy before. There was another, uh, matter of fact, that was Epstein. That was Epstein. I, I did a video on Epstein before, man. So, um, yeah, because it was Island. It was Epstein. It was the Island, man. So when I think about it, bro, I'm going to tell y'all, man, you got to understand, bro, that these things happen. And if somebody's involved in it, man, they deserve to be a part of the punishment. They deserve to get what's coming to them. Just because you a black man don't mean I got to support your foolishness, dog. Because here's the thing. I know you're not going to support mine. And if you do support mine, I'm not going to respect you. So I don't expect you to support my foolishness. So why would I support yours? Then you hear some of these guys out here, man, man, they just caught up, man. I mean, listen, if you're a man that's already successful, why are you in your feelings? Because another successful man is, 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 going through this i'm gonna be honest which i wouldn't take that that side but i also wouldn't be 50 you know constantly throwing jabs at him constantly throwing jabs at him because we'll talk about tomorrow 50 got his karma for that back man and you know he he's trying to act like it don't bother him but it bothered him so i just want y'all to understand man that yes he the tip of the iceberg he the one they thrust up to the forefront so when the thing come tumbling down 
like see if you at the bottom of the iceberg if you in the cell of the iceberg stuff may not never tumble down to you as long as you keep people up on all them levels up there but you got to keep somebody at the peak now when it come down you got to build it back up real quick because the closer you get to you the more likely it is that some are gonna fall in your lap at some point but when you hear men especially black men talking about how this man should be able to get away with this because if people knew it then it's okay or especially so what we're gonna listen to man we're gonna listen to slim thug talk about why cassie should have never said anything because she slept with that man for all those years and then i'll break it down and give you a non-emotional perspective on this because slim perspective slim's perspective is unfortunately very emotional so let's peep game on it cassie was with diddy for i don't know how many years every single day we kissing in the mouth going to sleep together loving each other rooting for each other you know doing whatever relationships is sleeping in the same bed trust now first of all cassie was his side chick right she was just a chick did ain't did it what did we look we looking at his history did it was just she was she was just she she was just a girlfriend who else we ever heard kim porter with besides diddy i'm talking about after diddy nobody that was his family house where his girls were where his boy that's that was his family house she was wifey so when you talk about man laying with that man sleeping with that man come on bro you're a single you're a single you're a single man with money just like he is what woman you let lay with you every night so these are you have to create a scenario in your brain to make you believe what you want to believe so let's finish man you know what i'm saying trust secondly now i want this millions i, I i'm out of there i'm out that now i want millions from you what does this do to your trust as as diddy you out of there you don't believe damn i slept in the bed with a motherfucking hundred nights man what the f and they take me back damn trust let me tell y'all something, man. Let me tell you why that outlook is so weird, man. Because we've all had our own trauma from the past. And sometimes it takes you from the time you're a child to the time you're an adult to reconcile yourself with those things and the feelings that they caused and the energy that it created in you. It could have been anything. It could have been seen. I went to school with a cat, man. He saw his mom. He saw his dad pop blast his mom, man, while he was a little kid. He was like five. You know what I'm saying? Sitting there watching his mom, man, with a piece of with a piece of body toe off, man. Man, I want y'all to think about that. Who knows what whatever, whatever I've gone through, I didn't go through that. So whatever that caused in him, I didn't have nothing in my life that caused that. But I know that caused some in him. So you gotta understand, man. So to say that just cause a woman going through something with you man for all these years that she don't have the right to at a certain time man snap out of it my thing is damn if she she probably just snapped out of it earlier you know what i'm saying like she she didn't wait till she got like 35 or something man to try to snap out of it and the thing is man once you a lot of times what guys don't understand is that a woman don't understand i you know men understand it. when you caught up on a scallywag when you caught up on a jezebel you don't know you caught up until you get out of it when you're in it you don't think it's as bad as people saying it is until you get to that point where you know it's bad but you still can't get out of it then something happens and allows you to break loose and in her case it was the trainer she met the trainer she was able to break loose you know what i'm saying because let me tell you something a woman talks to her trainer about her relationships her relationship with her husband her relationship with you know her friends her relationship at school her relationship with her job her relationship she talks about all of her relationships and that's how it ends up becoming a point where you know a lot of women end up sleeping with their trainer because it, it, there's there's a certain there's a certain bond that's created there you know what i'm saying and so you know when you really think about it and in the trainer he probably looking at cassie like man cassie is bad what are you talking about he probably showering over compliments well she 35 now did it had when she was 19 when she was 20 21 22 23 when she when, when she was showing up and she was the eye can on his arm and 
now for him, man, he don't want that version of her no more. She need to go back and try to get back what she had. But the dude, Alex Fine, which is his name, man, he was like, man, what are you talking about? He's come on over here with daddy. You ain't got no babies with that fool either? Come on over here, girl. Let me put some babies in your belly. And that's what happened. So I want y'all to understand that. And I want y'all to think about one thing. You have the right to snap out of whatever you, whatever spell you've been under. And you have the right to accept the fact that somebody indulged you and you had the right to respond. There's no statute of limitation on, on, on redeeming yourself for letting, for, for letting somebody run over you. Whether you're a man or a woman, there's no statute of limitations for it. Now, it'd be different if this was his wife. This is the problem. Slam talking like this is did his wife. It's not. The same way you ain't going to give a woman husband treatment if she ain't your wife, not permanent, then you can't expect a woman to do that either. And to be honest with you, man, just, just be perfectly honest with you. If anything, if one thing that she said has some fact to it, man, no, nobody, no man or woman has to let somebody dog them and then let them get away with it and you realize how bad you've been dogged. You don't have to do it. So, man, I just want to come through and drop this off on y'all. I appreciate y'all being in the joint. It's been two hours, dog. Y'all know we don't slide through that thing like that. Not like that right there. But we're going to go ahead and get on out of here, man. I appreciate y'all being in the joint. It's been real in the field, man. GLG, salute. Everybody else that's watching, man, I appreciate y'all, man. Let's get ready to slide out of here, man. We've been in that thing for a long, long time, man. It's time to roll. So, look, man, y'all put God first. Keep grinding and growing, man. And let's slide out of here to the anthem, man. Let's hit them with the anthem right quick. Peace. Seems like no matter what you do sometimes, your efforts go underappreciated or unappreciated, period. You know, all we do, man, is try to give men the information they need to become the best version of themselves. No hate. We love women. We don't hate them. We just don't take no foolishness. And we can't be controlled by our lust. Those men can, but not us. I was up, they us down, it's the motto. Sims claiming that they pimps, but they not though. I was up, they us down, it's the motto. Suckers claiming to be players, but they not though. I was up, they us down, it's the motto. Tricks acting like they max, but they not though. Now, I'm not gonna tell you, man, that you shouldn't value your woman at all. A woman does have value, but you can't overvalue her and convince yourself that she brings more value to your life than you bring to hers. You know, just the protection and provision is more than a woman can ever make up for, man. So I'm not saying don't give her her props for what she does, but damn sure, never make her feel like she's more important to you than you are to her because it's just a figment of your imagination. She knows the truth, so you have to understand the truth as well. This is called the abundance mindset. There's nothing she can give you that you can't give yourself besides a baby. And do you really want one of those right now? Nope. slide with is shut up in this and obedience now when you use the term obedience with a woman she automatically relates that to being a slave but slaves aren't obedient obedience is a choice slaves either do it or die shut up in this is another thing that women have a problem with it doesn't mean you can't talk it means that you can't talk when i'm talking it means that when we're talking about things that I do as the man, you don't have an opinion on those things because I make decisions based on facts, not opinions, not even my own opinions, and most certainly not yours. I was up, they was down, it's the motto. Sims claiming that they pimps, but they not though. I was up, they was down, it's the motto. Suckers claiming to be players, but they not though. I was up, they was down, it's the motto. Tricks acting like they mad. Down, it's the motto. Babies claiming to be alpha.